Hey guys, I had a student who signed up for the Victory Treaty feedback from the VictoryTreaty.com website and I asked if I could share the work to the Victory Treaty channel and yes was the answer. So hopefully that you guys will also be able to learn from this and I hope you all enjoy. Hey Tayuka, thank you for signing up for my feedback session. And you want to do a realistic celebrity, you want to do Tom Cruise, and you want me to show you how to make this look more like Tom Cruise. First of all, if you want to make a realistic character, you need to make sure that you really focus on getting the anatomy right at the beginning, which is I will show you how to do that. And since you do want to make a realistic character, it's best not to over-exaggerate on the proportions of the face. It looks like right now, it looks like a stylized character. But I will show you how to fix everything so that it looks more realistic and it looks more like the celebrity that you're trying to go for. But first things first is you need to make sure that you have perspective turned on. And make sure you go to draw and you set the focal length to 100. This is going to be the best settings when it comes to doing a realistic portrait. That way you have something that doesn't look deformed at all. You want something that will not give you distortion. So focal length 100 and turn on perspective. Alright, as I mentioned before, we need to really focus on the anatomy. Let's go ahead and go to the face area. Select your face and it looks like you already have up to subdivision 3. I would suggest that you work on the lowest resolution while you are trying to fix the anatomy and just the overall basic features of the face. And also, we could go ahead and just hide this eyebrows. Actually, this eyebrows, you made it a separate mesh. Um, I would suggest that you go ahead and just remove that. I would delete that. I think it will be easier if you just get the likeness down as much as you can without the eyebrows. And then later after you get the, try to get the likeness done, maybe around 70% likeness, 80% likeness, then you go ahead and add the eyebrows by using poly paint. You paint the eyebrows on there. I think it will be so much easier for you. So after you poly paint the eyebrows and then you need to make some changes to the mesh, it's going to be so much easier. If you want to use the move brush to just move things around, you're going to have to, you're going to be moving it, moving it with along with the eyebrows instead of moving the eyebrow mesh separately because you, you know, you don't want a separate mesh. It's just going to be a lot more difficult to adjust the, the face. So let's go ahead and go back to the, the face here. And I see that you have your high model here. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. You could keep that there if you want, but I might just get confused and accidentally um, fix that when I'm supposed to do the main model. Okay. All right. So first things first, let's go and fix the anatomy. I'm looking over here, looking under the eyes. We have some issues here with the eyes. The eyeballs is way too far from the actual eyelids here. Another thing is this here, it looks like this is the corner of the eyes and it looks like there's a huge slant like it's coming down. Yeah, you don't want this to be pulled back like that and we need to go ahead and fix that. So we could go ahead to our, let's go ahead to our, um, I'm going to go ahead and t open my hotkeys. I have a hotkey for this. So I have my own hotkeys hot keys here. All right, so just I just loaded up my hotkeys. Okay, and then, yeah, using the move brush, go ahead, make sure you have a symmetry turn on and just go ahead and move this. Move this forward because you don't want it too slanted. So just right now working on the, the shape of the eyes. And another thing is, as I mentioned before, is just the eyeballs is way pushed in there and that's not how we want it. And the, I guess the, the eyelids here is, is sticking out way too much. So what I would do is I would go ahead and I'm going to go back to the standard brush here. I'm going to go ahead and just mask this area out. 
Pass that out. And then using the grab brush, uh, using the move brush. Sorry, I just, um, I'm very used to using Blender. <laughs> but yeah, I would go ahead and pull this back so it's closer to the actual eyeballs. Yeah, you do want the eyes to kind of go like this so the upper eyelid is sticking out more than the lower eyelid, but you don't want to exaggerate too much. Otherwise, you're going to have some issues there like what I showed you. Okay. All right, so something like that. And we still do want it to be somewhat round. So I would fix the roundness of this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and unmask. I'm going back and just gonna fix this up. Okay, something like that. Okay. And looking over here, I think this is way, way too much. It looks like it's way down, so I would pull this up. Just pull it up like that. Okay. Now we need to go look at our reference here. I gathered some photos here. So I know you want the older version of Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise were how he looks like in Top Gun Maverick. So very mature version of him. And you could see here, if you just look at yours. All right. First of all, he looks like he's been, he lost a lot of weight, okay? From the way you sculpted him, he, he looked like he, you made him lose his, his volume on his face here, okay? He doesn't have a lot of fat on his face, but the way you did yours, it looks like the bony landmarks of his face is showing way too much. I mean, if you look up Tom Cruise, there are some bony landmarks that show on, on his face and on his forehead here but not as exaggerated as yours okay and if you look over here yeah we do see you see the oops do see the bony landmark here and then we got the cheekbone and then we have the orbital bone here Okay, and then we have the nasal opening. So we do see that. But he does have some more volume here, which we need to add on the character's face that you made there. And also, I think when you are doing a character, it's best instead of... I, I'm looking at it, it looks like he's kind of looking down so what i would do is i would make it look more like a neutral make it more neutral the the pose for this and the focal shift yeah so what i would do is i would go to my rotate tool here rotate tool and go ahead and go to the transpose all selected sub tools until you see that you have three horizontal shape here, rectangular shape. And then you're going to use the rotate tool to just kind of rotate it. So it's going to, you could see him looking up like this. Yeah, you want him looking, looking straight at you. Not, you don't want him looking down like this because it looks like you had him looking down like that. So I would definitely lift it up like that. So it's, he's more like facing straight straight at you okay I mean you don't want him looking up like that either so you want more of a neutral position neutral position I think it's looking up too much so maybe something like this yeah 
Okay, now back to draw brush. All right, so I would focus on fixing the overall shape of the face here. So going back to the, the character's face, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna use the clay buildup brush. And once again, just make sure that you are on subdivision one, very important to do that as you are fixing this. So I would add some more, definitely add some more volume on his face. And then smooth it, smooth it. And add a bit more cheeks here. Let's show more of the cheekbone here and then smooth it. Always constantly smooth it. And right now it looks too bubbly. Go back, I'm gonna go to the regular standard brush and then just push this in. But you don't want him to look too puffy like that either. Okay, and if you look at Tom Cruise here, he is a he is old, and I think he's in his fifties. And as you reach that age, you will notice that your face will get saggier. Okay, it will start to go down, and we see that if you compare his new photos to his old photos when he was young you will notice the difference there's more drooping on the face and you also see here there's the jowl you could see more of his jowl due to aging and uh, there's something that i also want you to notice here instead of doing a straight line like this for the jaw you need to have this part right there, and then you're gonna have this part coming around like this. So you see this shape, and then you see this shape. So we're gonna have to try to recreate that on your sculpt. I would do this here. Just really take your time to just really get the basics down and always constantly smooth it. Go. And I would go to pull this back and then this here we could make this wider the temporal bone here the forehead on the side make it wider using the move brush okay all right and i think the nose could also be fixed you could go ahead and make this slightly wider i think the biggest part of his face is definitely the nose and i am looking at the forehead here i think you might have exaggerated a little too much on this part here so i would go ahead and add some clay on top and just kind of smooth it and Go ahead and I'm gonna bring down my intensity for my clay buildup. Just gonna fix it like this and then smooth it. And I think this is a little bit exaggerated, it's a little too deep.
let's go ahead and focus on also on fixing the the side view here. If you look at the side view right now, yeah, we have this shape going. So it does look like he has a little bit of a bird nose and then it just comes straight down like this. So we go ahead and look at your Tom Cruise. I think this could definitely be fixed because it looks like you have it more like this and like that. And for his nose, it would be more like this. So I would go ahead and go back to the move brushed. And of course, make sure you still have symmetry turned on. And I would like kind of pull this up like this. Okay. And for this here, I think you need to, you, you made this popped out way too much. Okay. I would go ahead and use the grab brush. You just kind of make it less puffier, the lip area. And also here, this is pushed in too much. Once, once again, it's, it's way too exaggerated. You lose the realism if you exaggerate too much on the features. And I think for the eyes here, I think you might have, let's see, let me see the depth of the eyes. Yeah, I think for the eyes here, you must might have pushed it in a little too much. I would push it back out. Go. And this is really annoying me here, so I was just gonna go ahead and flatten that. There you go. All right, and I'm gonna go back to the lips now because it, it does look a little strange. I would just move this down and then pull this up. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some more volume in this area. Smooth it. Head in. Okay. All right, and looking below, yeah, I think this right here, it kind of has this strange shape. So we want to make it look more like a can of tuna around this area. So I would go ahead and use the moon brush. Crank up the size. And then just kind of pull this up. There you go. Something like that. So I'll just look at the anatomical forms there. So yeah, initially you kind of had it like this, which made it make it look really strange. I would just kind of round it out like that. Really the anatomical forms really matters a lot when you're doing realistic character. Just the overall shape, you gotta fix it. And you go ahead and do some smoothing. Some smoothing here. We can look at the eyes again, revisit the eyes. I think for the eye area. Once again, just really spending as much time on the on the lowest resolution as much as possible. Okay, go ahead and make this a little thicker and then just kind of smooth it. And I think around this area it's, it's too exaggerated, I would just smooth it.
and I think this is popping out way too much so I'm just gonna go and smooth that out and good got a little details here gonna introduce introduce some of the lines on the forehead already wrinkles on the forehead we could just subtly introduce it so I'm just using the clay buildup for this and another thing that I'm looking at this is very important you need to go ahead and fix the eyes because the way you did the eyes here of Tom Cruise you made the eyes too deep around this area but if you look at Tom Cruise eyes here There is some depth, but not as much as yours. It, we have more, some puffiness going on here. So we have our orbital bone around this area. And then we have our eyeballs here. And then we have, we have his, he has a little bit of fat on his orbital he has some fat on his orbital region at the top and also at the bottom and then we could see since he's aging there's going to be some fat that's causing this area to sag down the lid to sag down and so this is what we have to kind of implement on your character and we don't really want this depth at all on your character so we could go to the clay build up brush and just fix this add some clay on top and just go ahead and just smooth this area out yeah i would go ahead and just smooth this out what i would suggest you do is maybe after you fix this up you could you could combine you probably have to combine the ears with the head because i don't know why you made the ears separate from the head I understand if why you made the body separated from the head. That's what you should do. Separate the head from the body at the beginning. And then you dynamish the body. Get the basic shapes of the body down. And then for the face, it's going to be a separate area. Dynamish the ears and the head together. They should be together. And then you have to zero remesh it later after you get the, the shape down of your character. The reason why it's important to have the head separate from the body at the beginning is because when you are sculpting you want more resolution at the head at the beginning and then lower resolution in the body because the face is going to have more details so after you fix you do all the basic forms for the body and the head then you combine them all together and then you zero remesh it but yeah that's what you should be doing and you shouldn't have the ear separated from the head at all Alright, so focusing on the eyes, you need to go ahead and just go and make it not so deep, the eyes, because we know that this is the orbital bone, and then we're going to have some droopiness here, the droopiness on his eyes, which is caused by the fat and aging this will start to droop droop down and then just go ahead and smooth it and then looking gotta look from below here okay i would go ahead and just carve this in so we got the eyelids are here. His eyelids are here, correct? His eyelids are his eyelids would be here. If he was younger, you would probably see more of his eyelids. But since he got older, this drooped down and it covers some of his eyelids on this side. This starts to droop down. And I could just imagine as he get older and older, this will droop down even more. So you would see less of the eyelids here. 
being covered by this right here. Yeah, um, let's see, we'll look around. Right, so we're kind of getting there. I would go ahead and kind of maybe lift this up slightly. Right, slightly lift it up. And smooth this out. Okay, so I think we could add some more here, some volume, and smooth it. Smooth it. And we could also go to our H polish brush. H polish, and then just go ahead and polish this in. Polish this up. And I think good. Go ahead and just pull this down. Kind of do this here. And we could also fix the eyeballs here. I think for the eyeballs, if you look at his iris here, we kind of see it's more like like this. You could see the the eye, the lower eyelid is kind of covering the bottom part of the iris here. And I think yours is a little too much. We need we need to kind of rotate it. I would select the eyeball area. Yep, and I think for the eyeball you have, okay, how many eyeballs you have? Okay, so I would just work on one eyeballs. I'm going to delete this eyeball here, okay, and then work on this one here. All right, so I'm going to go to the rotate tool. Yeah, rotate, and I'm just going to rotate. Uh-oh. Okay, make sure when you're back on the rotate tool that you turn off the trans. Transpose all selected subtools. I'm gonna turn that off. So I'm only rotating just the mesh that I have selected. I'm gonna go and rotate it up and then just kind of move it up like this. All right, so something like that. All right, that's good. Then you could go ahead and duplicate that. I'm gonna duplicate it and we can go ahead and mirror it. Go to deformation and just go ahead. Wait, hold on. Mm, mirror. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so we got that there. And yeah, something like that. Okay, now we could also focus on adding more of the shape on the face here. So we could go back and make sure you select the face. You could go ahead and add some more of this here. Some volume. This is gonna be some fat accumulating there. And also here. So this is due to aging. And then of course we gotta add a bit more here. And smooth it, always smooth it. And remember what I was talking about with the gel, he has more gel due to aging. There's sag down around here, which you don't really see when he was young. But yeah, he's in his 50s. This is gonna be bound to happen to everyone at this age. Smooth it. And then we could kind of make his, make this show a bit more, the cheekbone. Okay, and looking over here, if we look at the side here, it's good to have 
your character in the quarter view too so you could see exactly how it's shaped out from this view okay so looking here here okay so i would definitely using the move move brush i definitely gotta go ahead and pull this out and give more of that gravity on the face so have a little bit more sagginess more of the square shape and pull this out some more okay so and maybe pull this down okay And then back on his face here, you add some more shape so he doesn't look all fluffy. All right, something like that. And he looks a little sad. Gonna pull this back like that. And yeah, now we do see some sagginess on his face, which is exactly what we're going for because he is on the older side, a mature side. I'm sorry, you keep hearing me say he's old, but he is, he is on that age he doesn't look bad for his age though he's, he's actually looking pretty good for his age but yeah we do need to understand that when it comes to age how the how the face is looking as you grow old how it changes and always smooth out the mesh when you're doing this always smooth it out and another thing that we have to do is we need to make sure that we are always switching our material. So you don't just stick to one material. If you go to the blend material, you could see more of the highlights in the face and what you need to fix. All right, and looking this way, okay. Could also kind of fix this area a little bit more volume here. All right, something like that, and make sure you're looking at all views. Another thing here that I see is a little strange is the the way you did the hair, you made it look like he has Johnny, Johnny Bravo hair. So I would go ahead and fix that hair area. So very important to also, I know this is just a placeholder, but I know you're going to add better looking hair later, hair later, but it's best to also still take your time on this and try to try your best to make it look like the celebrity that you're doing. Make sure the hair still look like Tom Cruise. Otherwise, it will affect the overall look at the face and how you're sculpting it. So yeah, I really suggest that you still take your time on this. Okay, and I think from the side view, looking the side view, could add some puffiness here. Maybe you could use the standard brush and just kind of make it puffy like this. A little puffier. And also over here, we could go ahead and maybe around this area. This area is not bad. Okay. 
But yeah, just kind of add a little bit more details, some strands of hair so you could better see what you're working with. And also here, I would definitely kind of fix this area up. Just bring out the hair here. I'm gonna go to my standard brush and just, just go ahead and crank this up. Now bring out the mesh for the hair there. And bring it out, bring it out. Move it down. Okay. And can go ahead and go to the H polish. Plan this area out. Go to the damn standard and just gonna go ahead and cut this. Pull this back in. Go. Pull it back in. And looking over here, yeah, pull that out. And I think I'm gonna go ahead, kind of mess around with the neck area. So I'm gonna go and select the neck. Just gonna pull this out. Just gonna make it thicker, so it has a thicker neck. And there you go. Yeah, for the neck here. We could go ahead and Dynamesh that. Go to Geometry, Dynamesh, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this to maybe 100, 104, so we have a low resolution at the beginning to work with, and Dynamesh that. And just go ahead and smooth this out. It's good to work with low resolution right at the beginning. And the body needs to be a separate mesh, as I mentioned before, from the head. Because the body is going to have a, a much lower resolution. Because it has going to have bigger, it's going to have bigger forms. And it's going to be, as, it's going to have less details as the face. So, so you want to have control of how much resolution you want for the body and on the face. So at the beginning, definitely make the body separate piece. And then once you got the forms down, the at least the primary shape and the, the primary and the secondary forms down, then you Dynamesh them all together with a higher resolution. And after you Dynamesh them all together, you could zero mesh it. But yeah, keep them separate piece right at the beginning. And of course, neck is way too long, so we can go ahead and add some shoulder. A little bit of shoulder here. And go ahead and, yeah, Something like that. And of course, once you have it all, once the geometry is all stretched out like this, you have to redynamesh it by just control and drag, control drag on the empty space here to redistribute the polygons. Okay. And we could create an indication of the sternocleidomastoid. Yeah, I suggest that you take an anatomy class when you are when you want to learn how to do realistic characters. I do have 
courses on the human anatomy and the facial anatomy. So if you really want to get good at this, I really suggest you also take that course there. Right. And as I mentioned before, like the ears and the face should be together. Okay. So what I would do is I would go ahead and select the face, the sub tool for the face, select that. And if you go to the geometry, you do have up to subdivision three right now, which you don't really need to do that right now. You should not be working with subdivision three. So I would go to subdivision one, go to sub tool. I would combine the face and the ears together and then dynamesh them so that you could combine them together. So I would go to my sub tool for the ears. So you got them separate pieces here. So I would just go ahead and merge them, merge the two ears. I'm gonna go to merge and merge down, press okay. And then just go ahead and bring it up. I'm gonna go to the move to first, move up. So that it's gonna be, the ear sub tool is gonna be close to the face here. And then merge the face with the ears. So I'm gonna go to the face and I'm gonna go to merge down and press OK. And once you merge them down, if you go right now on the sub tool for the face, so they're all combined, you see the ears and the face together. If you scroll down, uh, if you go scroll down to the geometry, you could see that you don't have the subdivision anymore, which is like I said, you should not be working on this yet until you get the likeness down. You should stay on the Dynamesh as much as possible. And then on the Dynamesh here, you have to fuse this together because it may look like they're together, but they're not fused together. So you need to, to really mesh them together by going to Dynamesh. For the resolution, we need to have it a higher value than the neck because we want to keep the details that we have added here. So maybe we could make this a resolution of maybe 200 and just go ahead and remesh that, uh, Dynamesh that. Oh, mask must be cleared. Okay, look like I have something masked here. So I'm gonna control drag to unmask whatever I have masked and dynamesh it. Yeah, I think I probably could increase the resolution some more, maybe set it to 300 and then dynamesh. Okay, so maybe something like this is gonna be easy to work with. And you could see it's been fused together. So we smooth it, we got that nice combined meshed and we could go Go ahead and just kind of flatten this out using the flatten brush. Okay, flatten brush. And we could go ahead and just indicate a little bit of the details for the ears. Yeah, definitely find some references of ears. I know you have references of Tom Cruise, but it's also good to find some references of ears. Just type in ears there and do your search of individual ears. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, solo this. There you go. So we're only looking at the head. There you go. So we got this shape and then we got this shape. So two shapes you need to think about, we got this, which connects to the head, and then we got this shape here. And we could go ahead and remesh that, control drag to remesh, and then just kind of go ahead and smooth it. And make this look better. Definitely, I would definitely take your time on this as much as possible. And we got this deep shape here we need to kind of blend it in using the clay build up brush and then just smooth it okay and go ahead and turn off solo show everything again and I think for for the ears here, we have a tiny shape. And I'm just gonna go ahead and remesh this again. 
then I want to do something about the eyes I think it's a little bit too too closed so I'm going to go ahead and mask this area out because I don't want to be touching this I want to man manipulate the upper eyelids slightly I'm gonna go to my standard brush here just kind of add some details uh, make this buff out a bit more and then I'm gonna go gonna lift this up slightly there you go there you go could also go back to the blend that we're working with all right so now that we have kind of fixed what we need to fix in regards to the anatomy and also we kind of got the likeness down a bit some more what we could do is we could see how accurate our likeness is by putting in a photo here of Tom Cruise preferably the front view of a photo and then we could add it to the spotlight and then we could kind of compare and contrast. So uh, I'm going to be using this photo. I'm going to put, in, put this photo inside ZBrush. So you go to Texture and Import. So find a photo of Tom Cruise. All right, so now you can see the picture is there. Just click on it and then click on Add to Spotlight. So we got down a spotlight here that we could use to kind of trace things out. And we can just go ahead and scale it, hover your mouse over here and just scale it up. Kind of move it to the left and let's go ahead and you could go ahead and still manipulate your 3D mesh. If you want to manipulate your 3D mesh, make sure that you deactivate the spotlight by pressing Z on your keyboard. So now you could go ahead and go back to your mesh here. So what I want to do is I want to find a good view that would that would kind of match that would match the the shape of the face here. So I'm gonna go this here, something like that maybe. Mm -hmm. I want to also rotate this. I want to rotate this photo. But I want to go ahead and kind of adjust this a bit more, something like that. Mm, yeah, kind of something like that, maybe like this. Yeah, something like that. And I'm going to press Z again to go back to the spotlight and just kind of rotate this, something like that. Press Z again. Mm, yeah, I think that'll be good. Me. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So now I'll press Z to activate the photo and the spotlight and we can go ahead and scale this up. We want to make it as large as this as can be. And we want to go ahead and put that here. You could mess around with the opacity. That's where the opacity is. It's right here. You could adjust the opacity. So you want to be able to see both the photo and also your sculpt. And you could also shift Z on the keyboard to just hide the, if you want to hide the photo. Press Z to manipulate the photo. Probably could make it larger. So I'm trying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, the nose is going to be my focal point there. The nose is going to be my, the main thing that I'm looking at to fit in onto the photo here, fit in to the mesh. So that's the main thing I'm looking at, trying to have it fit the nose of the character. Maybe crank it up a bit, something like this. All right, and maybe increase the size slightly. Uh, something like this I think would work 
Okay, so now that you are happy with how this looked like, we want to be able, if we press Shift Z and hide the photo for our spotlight, we want to keep this view right here, okay? So that we're able to go back to this as much as we can. So after you get your 3D mesh aligned with the photo, let's go to our document Z app properties and click on use custom, custom one, or you could click any of these, but custom one is good. So now if I go ahead and navigate and I want to go back to how it was before, I go to document and custom one. And so now I'm back to how it was. So I could like sculpt, do whatever I need to do, and then show my spotlight again. And I could go press on custom one and it goes back to how it is. All right. Now I could go to my move brush and just kind of adjust the, adjust the face, the features of the face to kind of match the photo. I'm going to go move this down to kind of match the photo here. And then I think the face is too wide. So I'm going to go use the move brush to just kind of pull this back. There you go. Hold on. Shift Z. Shift. Okay. Okay. So I think kind of hard to see the face. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know what I did there. I think I pressed something probably here. Mm, I think I, I pressed something here that I'm not supposed to. Oh god. Oh yeah, so I just accidentally. I accidentally did this. I just accidentally pressed on expose, so just be careful of that. All right, so now everything should be good. All right, so we could go to our, uh, yeah, I could go ahead and press Z and then bring up the opacity some more so I could see more of the photo. There you go, more of the photo. Yeah, I could see that maybe I have, I could make the chin, I could fix the chin, I could move it up slightly. And then the lip area, I could kind of align it better with the actual lips. And then here, here we go. Okay, that ends better. And the ears. Okay, for the ears, I think I could go ahead and crank up the opacity some more. Okay, so for the ears, could make it kind of go back slightly. It definitely could make it go back slightly. So it's I believe for the photo here, maybe the focal length is a little, a little lower, but it doesn't have to be exactly like the photo, but if we could match up the facial features, that'll be great. Okay. And I'm going to go to the neck area. There you go. All right. Mm, yeah, it's fine. Something like that. Okay, and I want to go back. Show this again. All right. And I want to go ahead and kind of identify. I'm going to go to my glacier brush and just kind of mark where the eyebrows need to go. So I could sculpt. While I'm looking at the photo, I could sculpt right on top. And if I press Shift Z, you could see that it's actually creating it. Up. Oh, I gotta make sure that I'm selecting the mesh. Okay, so now if I sculpt right on top, if I press Shift Z, you could see what's happening there. All right, so something like that. 
great. So I know this is kind of where the eyebrow is going to be. So I'm going to go and kind of mark it. You could even kind of trace out the, the wrinkles if I need to. And for the hair, you can see the hair is way up. So I would select the hair, just go ahead and bring that down. Hair is way up, go ahead and bring that down. And also here, could definitely bring that down. like that okay and then go select the face again and back to custom one shift Z show it all right so I think this is better definitely matching up more of the hairstyle all right now we can go ahead and Fix up the nose. Slightly fix the nose here. I think the nose now is a, is a little too bubbly. So I could go ahead and tone it down, smooth it. Elongate it slightly. There you go. Yeah, for the nose here, we gotta make sure that he still has that long occasion nose and the nostrils might be a bit too too much so we need to go ahead and the shape needs to be fixed Remesh, constantly remeshing it. There you go. It's just really going and fixing the nose area. So oh, you want to narrow it. We don't want it wide. We want it narrow. And we could also lighten this area out. Go lighten that. And going back to the eye area. Gonna go use the standard brush here. Go. And this, I think it's he looks a little too sad, so we don't want to exaggerate too much on this. I 
I think now is a good time to maybe kind of fix this area. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to go back to the startup material. Uh oh. I think I made a little bit of boobler around this area. So I'm going to fix this part. There you go. All right. I think we are on a good good spot right now. Let me what we could also do is we could like look at the photo. Maybe I want to focus on this photo here and then kind of make it set the positioning of the face to make it look like that photo. And then just kind of adjust it. Mm -hmm. And then around this area. Just move it. And this is a little too intense, so good. Gotta smooth that. And here it looks a little bubbly, the eye area. So to rectify that, we could go ahead and use our H polish here. Or our flat and brush. We also use our flat and brush for this. H polish only works if you already have a lot of resolution. But yeah, you wanna have the nice hard edge here. You want a nice hard edge. You don't want it to look bubbly. So I think the flat and brush would be a good tool to kind of make that a little sharper. See that? Much better. And very, very subtle. All right. Okay. Looking good. Well, we can go ahead and add his eyebrows and we're going to do that by using poly paint. So I'm going to go ahead and select the character here and let's go to our color. And I, I guess we could go ahead and just set it to RGB. We hold on color. Yeah, let's go ahead and set it to RGB. So we're just adding the actual color without adding, without applying the material color. And let's go ahead and fill object. And then we go to our, I like to use the damn standard as I'm doing the eyebrows. So damn standard here. I'm going to turn off Z sub so we're not sculpting on it. And then just turn on RGB. And we could make this maybe a, a dark brown color. Go. And here you go. Now we could go ahead and start painting. You could also bring down the intensity, the RGB intensity here. There you go. Very much better. All right. Uh oh. So just painting it real quick, real quick. And what's so good about this is you could 
easily manipulate this. You could just go to the grab brush and you could like manipulate your mesh. You see how easy that is to manipulate? So instead of having a separate mesh for the eyebrows, you could easily adjust it just by moving this around or repainting some areas. So yeah, I would go ahead and just kind of paint this out. So this is just, uh, of course, a placeholder. All right, you, you will be adding more of a realistic hair here. Not sure if you're gonna be using fiber mesh for this or Maya, but either or, I mean, if you're just gonna, you're just gonna be doing this for rendering a nice portrait and you're not really trying to making it, you're not trying to make it film ready, then you could basically do it all in ZBrush if all you're trying to do is just create a, a portrait that you could render out. But yeah, if you want it to be film ready or game ready, then you're gonna have to go through the process of topologizing and you're gonna do hair for games, then it has to be, you gotta do hair cards. If you wanna do hair for, I can switch the color here and then just maybe get rid of some of the eyebrows that I kinda overpainted it there. If you're trying to do this for films, then you're gonna have to use curves, you're gonna have to use particle system here. If you're doing blender, you're gonna have to use it in Maya, create the hair in Maya, hair system. Again, okay, I'm gonna go to the eyes here. And for the eyes, you can go ahead and just merge the two eyeballs. I'm gonna go to the merge down, press OK. Okay, and I'm gonna ask, yes, with the eye selected there, we could go ahead and add a blend material to that. So I'm gonna go to blend and then go to MRGB because we want to assign a material on that. And then let's go to color fill object. So now we have a shiny material there. And then we could go start painting it out. Switch color here. And I'm gonna go back to RGB. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this out. Just so we could see a bit more what we are working with. And I'm gonna go back to the face and onto the face area. We could go ahead and kind of, ooh. Uh, if you wanna go back to sculpting, just turn off RGB. So you don't wanna sculpt anymore. And then you could just go back to, uh, you don't wanna paint anymore, just turn off RGB. All right, and I think Gonna go ahead and gonna sharpen the nose up, sharpen that up. And I think um, this area might be, mm, okay, might be a little bit too intense around here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tone that down. I think this area might be a little too intense. So just kind of fixing that. You go. And just gonna smooth it, smooth that. All right. Okay, so yeah, I think for the hair here, we could also apply that, that brown color. So I'm just gonna maybe set it to a 
yeah, I like that brown color. Yeah, I think he has a dark brown hair. Maybe a little darker. Yeah, something like that. And I could go ahead and fill that color in. I'm going to go to RGB and fill object. And same with this, I'm going to go and fill that object. Go. All right. And I think something's sticking out here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And looking from the side view, good further fix the side view area. I push that in, put it in, and click here. Uh oh. Turn off RGB, so it's we're only sculpting. Remesh. Pull that up. I might have stretched the neck slightly, didn't I? I think that's what I did. Yeah, because it looked a little too long. <laughs> might have stretched it out. There you go. Sorry about that, Tom Cruise. Gonna stretch out. Yeah, and looking from the side view. Okay, and we're looking here from the side. Go back to the face and just gonna fix it up like that. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is definitely a lot better than how it was before.